Listen, I've been gone for a minute, but I'm back with the jump off. Guys, um, if you have been watch if you watched my last two reviews, you know that I have not been going to bed until like uh what some 5 30 sometimes 7 30 sometimes 9 a.m it's been killing you girl i just i was just off i was off my my sleeping was a mess my eating was a mess it was a mess so i literally took a week to get my body adjusted and last night hallelujah <laughs> last night was the first night that I was able to sleep eight hours throughout the night and I was able to go to bed at around 11 p.m. <sighs> it's the little things in life. I was like, I woke up this morning like, thank you, Jesus. I woke up at 8 a.m., guys. I woke up at 8 a.m., not 6 p.m. That has just been my day since this whole, you know, plague has started. It was just throwing me off on every level and I just had to like get my body adjusted. And I'm finally adjusted and I have beautiful energy and I'm ready to review. I will say this though, melatonin pills are not for everybody because I got, you know, I won't say where I got them from, <laughs> but because my sleep was so messed up, I invested in some melatonin pills and um, I had a terrible reaction. I don't know if you can see it, but like my skin started to become discolored around my lips. I was having like pain from like the side of my head to the back of my neck. So I also spent that week detoxing from melatonin pills because I was also taking too many. I wanted to go to sleep. I wanted to go to sleep. How much Judge Judy can a girl watch? I wanted to go to sleep. So yeah, <laughs> last week was a lot. I, I went through a lot guys, but I'm back and I'm ready to review. So let's get into it for real this time. Hey, hey, Avery, girl, listen, you about to marry a gigolo, sweetie. It is what it is. I feel like all of your womanly instincts knows that you are with a gigolo, but you don't want to know that because he fine. I've been there. I totally understand. We as women, we are going to change this though in 2021 because look, listen, if we get out of here and it's still 2020, you are allowed to make some mistakes. Make the mistakes, girl, but get it right for 2021. So in 2021, we are going to stop allowing fine men to turn us into idiots because Avery knows. Everything about Avery knows that she is about to marry a gigolo. She talks about it in her confessionals. Sis knows, but she does not want to believe it because Ash is fine and the sex is amazing. That's what it is. That's what it is, girl. That's what it is. You know, Avery, you know, you don't need any more signs. You know. Even when Ash slipped up and said that he was single, she still was trying to talk around that. I was like, girl, this man looked you in your face and said, I'm single. Basically telling her, you don't have the right to ask me about my life when you're not here. <laughs> and she stayed. She stayed and still let the conversation go on because she's feeling some sort of way because she doesn't really trust this guy because she knows guys she knows it's her body that doesn't want to let go but you know so she's questioning him about the women in his phone and about the suspicious text message that he like sent her and was just like see this is what happens when my female clients write to me i send it to you to let you know that i'm not cheating and i also want to show you that i was not going back and forth with her this is just what she was doing and i wanted to send it to you so that you can see that i was being faithful girl he's a pro he's a pro he's showing you the text threads that he has with women he don't want to bang ask him to show you the ones of the chicks that he considers to be a 10 let me see those text messages i want to see how you talking to that chick that's five foot seven with the big titties and the small waist what is that conversation like don't play me ash that's what she needs to do, but she doesn't want to because like I said before, he's fine, the sex is good, and she want to bring something fine and brown home. That's what it is. We've all been there. We've all, listen, come on. We've all been made to look like a dummy by something that's fine. We've all been embarrassed in front of our family and friends, but we keep on going back because he's 6'5", because he has a great smile, because he has a low cut season with the deep waves, okay? Because he got an East Coast accent, child. Let me tell you something. From Philadelphia to Boston, y'all got me. Y'all got me. <laughs> Let that East Coast accent drop. I'm foolish. Foolish. So poor Avery is just 
fighting with the truth and just how she feels about Ash because I was watching their scenes this entire episode and I was just like Avery he's giving you everything you know what I mean like it, it's right in front of you mama when he said that he was single you still continue the conversation like I couldn't believe that I have gotten my family into this show now so before it was just me then it was my mom now like my little sister is asking me when 90 Day Fiance is coming on because she's obsessed with Big Ed and Little um and Little Rose Big Ed and Little Rose and now my older sister is watching it as well so we were watching this episode together and when Ash said to Avery well I'm single the whole couch was like what what? My family read Ash for Phil. <laughs> I was so proud. So proud. But I think he just uttered his true mind. Because when Avery is not in Australia, Ash is single. You know what I mean? And he's doing all of this stuff just to keep her connected to him like showing the ring showing the bracelet and all of that stuff and making a big deal a, a, about her so that she can know that he's being faithful to her but every woman knows that when you're putting it on too much you're hiding something so i feel like honestly that avery just she just knows she just knows and she just has to come to terms with you know what what this man is doing he's playing you girl he is playing you. And honestly, there's nothing that can be said because she already knows. Avery knows. And I'm still stuck on the fact that he was like, I'm single. Damn. I was like, oh, you said it? You said it, Ash? <laughs> oh, dude, you slipping. I'm single. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, and let me just address this because I know some men watch my show. Uh, my show. Yes, my show. Work, Nikki. <laughs> my show. Listen, I know that this is something that a lot of men think. Let me just clear this up for you. If you are dating, courting, engaged, you are not single. I don't know why men believe that they are finally off the market on their wedding day. No, baby, just because you don't have a ring on your finger does not mean that you are not in a relationship. The only time that you can say that you're single is when we're in the talking stage because we're both talking to multiple people. When we decide to come together and just exclusively date each other, you are no longer single. You're not single. But so many men think this way and I think that's actually what Ash is doing to try to rationalize his cheating on Avery. That if you're not here, then we're not, we're not in a relationship. You're in a different zip code. You're not my wife yet. So as of right now, I'm single. Even though I'm trying to move me and my son into your home, like what are you doing? Being a man, the bar is set too low for them ladies. After 2020, if we get out of here, 2021, we're setting standards and we're what? Sticking to them. 2021. 2020, act a fool. Because I'm going to act a fool if we get out of here, baby. I'm going I'm to cut up. Like, oh my goodness, who is that over there wowing and hoeing? Is that Nikki Star? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I am tired of being in this house. I have never missed men so much before in my life. Oh, God. Even the cheating ones. I'm like, what is this fool doing? Y'all, it was like 4 a.m. And I was on Instagram of a dude that was just terrible to me. Like terrible. It wasn't even cute. And I'm on his Instagram and I was like, Nikki, what is, I got to get out of this house. Why am I thinking about this demon? <sighs> Pray for me. Jeffrey and Varia. So Jeffrey, listen, um, you were in prison. You did not have a baby. The way he talks about his prison sentence, I was in prison for uh, 13 months, two and a half years. I feel like he's doing that months thing, not because that's the time he served, he felt every moment, because it sounds better than I was in prison for two and a half years. Stop the scamming. He is a grade A scammer. Not shading, I'm impressed. I'm impressed the way he is able to talk himself out of stuff. You know, what's going on with the women who are like faithful watchers of reality TV? Because if you go to any of Jeff's lives, the women are in them comments thirsty as hell. I was just like, did you not read the police report from this ex? Like, are, are you guys not understanding? Have you seen him on the show? What is attractive about this man who has a full head of hair that looks like a toupee? What is attractive about him? 
Please tell me because I am confused. You know, it's really sad that for every man, there's about four or so groupies trying to build him up and make him feel like a king. This is why men don't have to work or do anything. Like this is why, why am I going off on a tangent? It's because I miss men. I miss them. That's why I'm talking about them. Good or bad? Good or bad? So anyway, Jeff keeps on talking to Varia about his 13 months in prison. And <laughs> Varia... Ah, uh, you know what? Your the what your way of thinking has to be so off kilter to make me like defend Jeff, right? Because when she's talking to him and he's like revealing to her, you know, the time that he was in prison, she's just like, "Oh, mm, people don't change." Girl, what? <laughs> who the hell are you? Excuse me, Jesus Christ! Like, who are you? <laughs> I don't believe that people change. But you, I think that you have changed. Oh, girl, you don't hold no weight in anybody's life to be coming down hard on people to be like, oh, you've done that before. You won't do it again. I just, I didn't like that. I just did not like that comment. And it really bothered me because here I am defending Jeff and we know how terrible he is. People can change. Maybe not Jeff, but there are people who can change, especially when you're young. You make really dumb decisions. That's why older people are wiser. They have lived a life where they have made a bunch of mistakes. So the whole people can't change, that really walked up my back. I'm like, who are you? Who are you, madam? And when I said madam, pun. And well, even after Jeff has lied to her for, you know, their entire relationship, Varia, who believes that people can change? But somehow she believes that this one specific person can change and she decides to forgive Jeff and continue to pursue a relationship with him. And now she wants him to tell her mother and brother that he is a felon. And I'm thinking like, girl, how hard is it for you and your homeland that you are willing to hitch a one-way ticket to America with a whole felon? I would have been like, you know what? That's okay because there are plenty of American men that have been hitting me up who are not felons and who have not beat up on a woman. I can do better. But maybe she can. So she decides to move forward with Jeff. And now they have to sit down with her mother and brother. And they sit down with her mother and brother. And, and Jeff explains to them through Varia that, you know, he had been lying and that he is a felon. And that when he was very young, <laughs> very young, that one time he got locked up for um, dealing drugs. You know what? The thing about it is, right? Jeff can only do this with a foreign woman, you know, somebody who doesn't know the American justice system, because you can't say that to no American woman. Oh, I was locked up in federal prison for two and a half years for, you know, dealing drugs. Excuse me. <laughs> what? You did two and a half years in prison for dealing drugs one time? Excuse me, you are a white American male and you did two and a half years on your first offense. Get the hell out of here. That's when he was online trying to get a woman from Russia because no American woman would have rolled for that. We would have been calculating in our head like, what? That's your first offense and you did two and a half years? I'm sorry, you're not black. <laughs> a black man can tell me that, but not you, Jeff. Not you. <laughs> I would have been like, okay. So this was your first offense and you did two and a half years. Did you kill a cop too? Because that's the only way that that is going to make sense. Nobody, you know, unless you're black, let's double drink or shave the devil. Sprinkle in some Mexican people in there too. Unless you've got a lot of melanin, there's no way that you're doing two and a half years in federal prison for your first offense. No way. No way, Jeff. But again, you could do that with a non-American woman. See, this is what these men do. And to the people outside of the U.S., listen to mother. Listen to mother, especially the ladies. This is what happens, right? These American men who don't mount up to nothing. They not worth change for a quarter. They are a whole mess. They go online and they try to find a woman from another country so that they can put on this facade of an image and feed it to you. So they'll tell you all of these lies create this person and create this world that does not exist. And then when they get you over here and you can't get back, you're trapped and you see this fool for who he really is. Now listen, I'm not saying that you cannot find love online and that you cannot find love online from people within different countries. You can. Like I said, I know somebody who went through that part. I know two people who actually have, you know, went through this process. They didn't find each other online. They just met and were able to, you know, come together and do the whole 90 day and the visa process, right? 
I do believe in this. I'm just saying, foreign women, listen up. If you are on a site and you see this American man who is pursuing you, check all of his social media. If he has created accounts on different, you know, international love kind of websites, flag him, flag him and do your re- search because if he's online with multiple profiles in different countries trying to find foreign women specifically and immediately in his bio his thing is i don't like american women watch him because he's probably a serial killer or <laughs> well, he's a problem he's a problem and american women are not giving him the time of day stay woke now although i agree with varia's brother and uh her mother's reaction to jeff I just want to say, why in the hell is this family so judgmental? Because the first thing that the brother said to Varia is, well, you know, people don't change. Is this a Russian thing? <laughs> I mean, damn, he went to prison one time that he told you about. But I mean, if this is what you're believing of him, all of a sudden, he just can't be a different person. He could not have grown from that and just become a better person. We know that for Jeff, that's not the case. But that is the case for a lot of people. So I just... When the brother said that, I was just like, what is going on in this family? Is it just this family that is so judgmental or is this like a cultural thing? Please let us just know in the comment section below. Aside from that, I agreed with the way they reacted. The mom was like, oh, hell no. No, you're not going with him. I do not want my daughter to be with him. Makes sense. Any mom would react that way. So I was here for the reactions. I was like, yes, mother. Yes, mother. Protect your child. She was going off and did the whole neck thing. <laughs> Mother's neck and finger. She was like, oh, no. I do not want you going nowhere with Jeff. I was like, yes. Let it know. So Bari's mother and brother do not approve of Jeff. And now this couple is at a crossroads because they don't know what they're going to do moving forward because Varia, like Usman, really wants her family's approval before she continues on with Jeff. I will say though, um, you know, Jeffrey got to work on his lying, but this family needs to work on forgiveness. Who crossed this family in the past? Lisa and Usman. So Usman, the more I see of his family, the more I'm confused because I'm just like, Everybody knows their family. So Usman, you knew. You knew that when you brought this older, very much older, white American woman to your mama, that this was going to be a no-go. Like every time we see them, they are trying to pistol whip this woman into approving of their marriage. And I'm just like, but you knew. You knew this would be a long shot, if not damn near impossible. How many times does your, does your mother have to say no? They're running up on her at a home. They're running up on her at the mosque. I'm just like, where are y'all going to run up at her next? The local Walmart? Or what are they called? So y'all got Walmart over there. The Walmart is everywhere. I mean, where are y'all going to run up on mama next? How many no's does she have to give this couple because Usman and Lisa do this drive-by at the mall and the mom is just embarrassed, embarrassed. They run up on her trying to get her approval again. And I will say this, Lisa has been trying. I mean, Lisa is garbed up every time, you know, she's being very respectful over mommy and you know, her man's religion. She is trying. I will say this though, Lisa is going to let you know that sis got a perm because every time that she is garbed up, she always leave that little curly bang out. That little perm bang to let you know, oh baby, I got some texture. Even though Usman's mom is not here for it, she is still trying to be very respectful. You know what I mean? We have only seen her talk about why she does not approve of Lisa in her confession. She never says it to Lisa's face and she never says it in front of Usman. She did say she does not approve of the marriage, the union between Lisa and Usman. However, when Usman relays the information back, he's always throwing in something disrespectful concerning Lisa. Have you guys noticed that? That when Usman translate things that are said by his people to Lisa, it's always a little disrespectful line or comment thrown in there that was not translated. Because when he approaches his mom and asks her, for her approval, she simply says, no, I just don't approve. She's not right for you. Usman throws in, oh, mommy said she does not approve of someone her age marrying her son. And I was like, she did not say that, Usman. 
Why did you throw that in? That little dagger at Lisa's age. Hmm. I'm not team Lisa, but I feel like you be picking sometimes, Usman. You know what's really sad is that she continues to say that she does not want her son to become a servant. So that's letting me know that that is something that's really big or or something that they believe about American people. I mean, <laughs> why wouldn't they? But it's just really sad that she won't be able to see anything other than her son being a servant for this white woman in America. She's just like, I don't, I don't approve of it. Maybe if Lisa was younger, she would think differently. But I think she sees this older white woman and I think because of where she's from, she thinks that Lisa comes from privilege. So she's thinking that this woman is lying to her, trying to trick her to take her son over to America to become a servant because she has said that multiple times that she doesn't want her son to go to America to become a servant. And I was like, oh my God. Every time she says it, it just breaks my heart because I get it. I get why she thinks like that. And it's just, ah, uh, it's, ooh. It's so sad. It's so sad that she sees her and she sees somebody who's just like, oh no, you're going to make my son a servant. America got to do better on so many levels. But I'm like, damn, this is what the people, <laughs> oh my God, what do y'all think they doing to me over here? Not treating me the best, but still. I ain't nobody's servant unless he's fine. Wait a minute. <laughs> got to get out of the damn house. Yolanda and Williams, I'm still not covering uh, Miss Yolanda in her lies. <laughs> like, her and Dave, I'm not featuring them. Unless their partner shows up, I'm done. I'm out, right? I'm only stopping here to say once again that my mother cannot stand Miss Yolanda. <laughs> Every time she comes up on her screen, she is disgusted. She just cannot believe that this woman at her big age is so foolish. There's this scene where Miss Yolanda is talking to her daughter about the photos that she sent to Williams and she believes that somebody is trying to extort her. And while I'm like watching this scene, while my family and I are watching this scene, my mom just says, how can you be this old and dumb? Like with utter disgust. She's so disappointed in Miss Yolanda. And I am too, because I'm just like, if you're gonna scam us, right? If you're gonna fake a storyline, you couldn't have got us, you couldn't have gave us something a bit more juicy. I know there's somebody in a different country who also watches 90 Day Fiance who was ready to scam with you. You could have did a bit more research and you could have put in a little bit more of an effort to make us believe it. The one who continues to let me know that this is all fake and this is all scamming is your kids, especially your daughter. The way she reacts to you saying things does not make sense. If my mom comes to me and tells me that she has been sending images to some dude that she's never met and now he's extorting her for money, I wouldn't be like, oh wow, really? Why did you do that? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Stephanie and Erica, we finally uh, got a couple from the LGBTQ community and it's an abusive couple, my God, today. What's going on, 90 Day Fiance? We have been waiting and wanting some LGBTQ representation and this is what you give us, an abusive one. Wow, well, I guess they said y'all want diversity. Here it is. So Stephanie and Erica, uh, I feel like this couple is definitely scamming, right? I don't think that they worked it out enough to give us a scripted relationship that we, the viewers, would enjoy. I think they were just doing stuff to give us conflict. And I also think that, that they also gave us really good parts of their fake relationship. However, when you give over your life to a reality TV show, they can cut and paste it and make it into anything that they want to make it into. Because now Stephanie regrets doing the show. And I think that she regrets doing the show because it did not show her in the light that she wanted it to. But honey, that's the game you play with reality TV. And I think they probably came together and was like, we can build our brand, we can build our YouTube, and let's just come on here with this relationship. That would make sense with why Erica was always coming back to Stephanie after she was being so awful to her because it just doesn't make sense that she keeps on running back to someone that she's never been intimate with, that she's only known online and, and allow them to continue to mistreat her 
that way if there's not really any physical or emotional connection. So I'm thinking for the both of them, this conflict is real lightweight because it's something that they planned, but they did not plan the editing of their relationship. So now we're probably just getting the abusive parts of Stephanie and probably not seeing if Erica is coming back at her or probably not, not seeing if they had, you know, performed some happier times with this couple. So we're just getting the drama filled stuff and I think that for Stephanie, it's not working out for her because she's not coming off the way she planned. Because Stephanie is definitely giving all of us white eye turner vibes. You know what I mean? Like she is, oh gosh, 29 years old. 29 at your big age, huffing and puffing and pouting around Australia because Erica has, you know, friends. That's basically what it is. She is upset that this woman that she is in love with has other people in her life that she loves as well and it just bothers her that she is not giving her all her attention i will say this though when stephanie went to meet erica's friends i'm not saying that she should have confronted adam right i am saying that i would have felt some sort of way because and maybe it's a language barrier or something is not being translated between the two of them because Stephanie is saying she doesn't want to go to this party because at this party a majority of the people there are people that Erica has slept with child Erica is for the streets okay so she was feeling some sort of way about being put in that environment and one of the people I guess that she most recently had sex with was Adam however when you talk to Erica She's saying, oh no, we just kissed. We didn't hook up. But Stephanie is reiterating that she had sex with Adam and multiple people at this party. So does hook up mean something different in America than it does in Australia? Hmm, maybe that's it. Because when they both talk about it, we get two totally different interpretations of what Erica has actually done with this entire party. <laughs> so Erica and Stephanie are at this party where Erica has banged everybody there, allegedly. And Stephanie decides to confront one of the guys that she most recently had sex with. And it doesn't go well, as it shouldn't. Like one, it's embarrassing. And two, the guy is like, who the hell are you talking to? Adam had every proper and right comeback for Stephanie for every comment that she made towards him. Because why would you come into this party? That is for you. It's basically for Erica's friends to meet someone that she wants to be in a relationship with. Why do you come in a party and cause conflict? Like you're coming in, addressing people that she has had sex with, then you're walking up on two of her girlfriends who are talking about the situation and encouraging Erica is just like, listen, you're a great person. You do not need to be in this situation. I will say this though. When Stephanie walked in on the conversation with Erica and her two friends talking about Stephanie, the girl was like, oh, there you are. We were just talking about you. And I'm like, you didn't see the camera crew? <laughs> Don't play me, play checkers. This Erica and Stephanie situation is really tricky because on one hand, you have this one woman who we all believe is bisexual, right? Um, and then you have Stephanie who we think, I'm not saying that she's not right. I, I just don't, I don't know if she has, played on this field enough to want to officially, you know, be a part of the team. That's all I'm saying, because she just gives me these vibes where she's just not comfortable with being intimate with Erica. So it's really easy to ride for Erica because she's essentially in an abusive relationship, at least a verbally and mentally abusive relationship. So you feel really bad for her, right? And Stephanie just comes off as a complete villain. However, I agree with Stephanie in one area. When she was talking to Adam about Erica and Adam said, oh, we'll always have chemistry. Excuse me? <laughs> what? I felt like in that moment, Stephanie was kind of justified for feeling some sort of way, especially with Erica hugging this guy and saying that she's really good friends with him. And then for him to say to her, oh, well, we're not together, but we have chemistry and we'll always have chemistry. No, you're not saying that to me. You're not saying that about my man. Like if I meet somebody that you have had sex with, I can be cordial, right? I can be, you know, the good girlfriend. But if that chick 
tells me that you and her is always going to have chemistry. You know, we're probably fighting because excuse me. No, you should not have the chutzpah to sit in my face and tell me that you and my man will always have chemistry. First of all, I'm fighting you and then I'm fighting him because he should have never put me in that situation. So I felt bad for Stephanie because I was just like, ah, I would feel some sort of way if that were me, right? That's the only time that I ever felt bad for Stephanie. I do understand her being upset about that because that little moment, you know, did something to me. But to leave that party crying, acting like you're some kind of victim and then calling your friend who obviously knows that you are a mess, but somehow encourages your mess and never calls you on the carpet, that ain't good either because nobody is checking you for being awful. You're just being a really awful person you're showing the world and somebody that you allegedly love how terrible you can actually be because you came in a party not trying to get to know everybody, feeling some sort of way, again, justified, which you should have told that to your girl. You should have told Erica, I don't want to go to a party with people that you have slept with, even if they're your friends. I don't feel comfortable. That should have been a conversation and you should have not went to this party. But then to go to this party and act the fool and then leave as some kind of victim and not acknowledge your wrong, my Stephanie, I can't rock with you. I agree that you should have felt some way about that comment that Adam made about Erica. That is not excusable. She should have felt some sort of way. She should have reacted differently. And especially at her big age. Like I just, Stephanie, you gotta grow up, ma. You have got to grow up. Now your girlfriend, who you keep on saying that you risked your life to come see, is sitting in a party that she threw for you with the soul being taken out of her body. She's just sitting there deflated in this beautiful fringe jacket that I was going to buy. But when something like that is on the ASOS website, it does not last long. I have been trying to get that fringe jacket for over a year. It just has never come back in stock and it looked great. It looked great on Erica. Normally I don't ride for her fashions. There are pieces. I like her fashion in pieces. Altogether, you know. It's giving me a 15 year old from like 2007. That's what it's giving me. But you know, little pieces, I will take. I will take. All together, no ma'am. No ma'am. But she's sitting here defeated. And I just felt really bad for her. I felt really, really bad for her because to be honest with you, in this entire story with Erica and Stephanie, Erica has got the short end of the stick every time. And now she's just gotten embarrassed twice by her lover in front of her friends. I just, uh not cute and also what kind of friends do you have erica let me tell you something no dude that i'm dating can embarrass me like that in front of my friends my friends would have been escorted stephanie out they would have been like who is this and why are they talking to you like that nah you're not gonna be with them you gotta go you gotta go and don't fight or you getting jumped you know what i really have to <laughs> i am civilized and so are my friends it's just you know I've realized from living out in LA, I'm civilized to a Philly extent. <laughs> Not everybody is fighting. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I just feel like in Philadelphia, it's like if a fight happens, it's like, okay, well, you know, that's done with. You can move on. But I'm like, you can't put your hands on everybody. <laughs> that's why you got to travel. Get out of your neighborhood. Get out of your city. Learn the rest of the world because you'll realize that not everybody gets down like you. But again, my friends would have jumped Stephanie, period. And I'll exit this conversation about Stephanie and Erica with this one comment from my little sister. After watching this episode, she said to the television and to Stephanie, hopefully you were listening, Stephanie is single at 29 because she's a train wreck. I have to agree. Stephanie, I don't know you as a person. I'm just talking about the character that you play on this show is a train wreck. The way it's edited, mama, you look like a basket case. Do better. Do better. I hope this helped your brand. You know what I mean? I feel like this is what she got on this show uh, for her and Erica. If anything, I think it really helped Erica's brand. I hope it did something good for you as well. You know what I mean? I really, really do because baby... Woo, they are raking you through the coals on this season. That's it for me. What did you guys think about this episode? I thought it was fun. You know, I thought it was a fun, cute little filler episode. I feel like we're going to get into the meat and potatoes on the next episode. And that's what I'm looking forward to. But I enjoyed reviewing this episode because I am rested and ready to go. I hope you enjoyed watching. And if you like what you see here, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you in another video for something else. Stay tuned. Love you guys. Bye.